Welcome to our first podcast of the second unit um, on page three. And we will finish looking at the history of the atom, but pretty much this is probably the most common picture you're used to seeing of the atom. And we'll talk a lot more about the electrons, but right now we're kind of looking at the structure that we have. So at the top of page three, it says, okay, define electrons, protons, and neutrons. You need to know all this information. What is their relative mass, their charge, their symbol, and that location within the atom? Okay, easiest way to do that is make a chart. Okay, so what I'm going to say is pause right now, pause me, write that, and then you can get started because I'm going to keep on talking, but I'd rather you have it written down. Okay, so look at what you need to know. The electron, notice this is a relative mass. What does this mean? This is like in comparison because an electron has mass. It is matter. It has mass. Just compared to the size of a proton and a neutron, they are about the same size. The electron is so small that we really don't count it. Um, it'd be like if I have a flea on an elephant. That flea still has mass, but is that flea going to contribute any significant mass to the overall mass of the elephant? No, but it's still there. So the electrons have, then we say they have zero mass. What contributes most of the mass? Look at this is what contributes most of the mass. Okay, you need to know the charges. The electrons are negative. Protons are positive, neutral neutrons. The symbols, okay, but this is also important. Where are they? The electrons are outside. Protons and neutrons are in the middle. Hence, that is why we say most of an atom's mass is in the nucleus because that's where the protons and electrons are and they are the particles that have the mass. Now when you see this AMU, it's just so that you know an AMU is just an atomic mass unit. It's just a definition that they've given to it to make it so that we're not dealing with the actual masses because they are like 10 to the negative 27th kilograms. Too small to be dealing with so we put it in a relative terms. Um, let's look at that nucleus. You have a bunch of positives together. And if you think about magnets, you put positives together, they should repel. But actually, they don't. And this is just one of those forces, kind of like gravity. It's a force we know, but we really don't know a lot about it. But it's just called a strong nuclear force. And it's one of the four fun fundamental forces in nature. And like I said, gravity is one of the other fundamental forces. It's just a force we're not really sure what, how we know, um, excuse me, we're not really sure how, but we know it does. And we know if we tap into it, you get a lot of that energy, and that is how we get nuclear reactions, which we will be talking about in just a little bit, meaning in a couple weeks, couple units down the line. Okay, some definitions you need to know. I'm going to look in some highlights, some important things. Okay, these are all, we're talking about different isotopes. You're going to hear that. Different isotopes are just like samples of an atom. Okay, so in an isotope, we'll talk about its atomic number. What do you need to know? Atomic number equals protons. Get that in your head. If I know an element's atomic number, I know how many protons it has. So look at your periodic table. Hydrogen has atomic number one. It has one proton. Helium is two. It has two protons. Okay, mass number. Mass number, well, just think of it logically. What makes up the mass of an atom? What makes it up is protons have mass, neutrons have mass. So the mass number is a total number of protons and neutrons. Okay, the mass number is a counting number. We're not talking, this will not necessarily be the same as the average atomic mass that's written on the periodic table. We're going to talk about that in a couple days of how to calculate it. I'm counting. I'm just counting how many protons, how many neutrons with the mass number. Okay, specifically an isotope. They're atoms of the same element, hence same element, well if it's the same element that means it has to have the same number of protons. But look at it, it has a different mass. Well masses again, what's the same masses? Protons and neutrons, so therefore it has to have a different number of neutrons. 
same protons. Because if you change the protons, you change the element. Never ever pick protons as an answer of what's different. So if isotope, isotope has different masses, but the same protons. Okay, versus an ion, so they have the same element, hence same element, they have still same number of protons, but they've lost an electron, lost or gained an electron. Well, since an electron is negative and you still have the same number of positive protons, what's going to happen? You're going to change its charge. We will be spending a lot more time on ions, so we're really just right now is to know that definition, and we will be coming back and talking. The next unit is all about the electrons, so our focus won't be on this unit so much with the ions, more with the isotopes, but that doesn't mean you need to forget this definition. It's just we will become more comfortable with it down the line. Okay, how do we represent? There's a couple different ways you need to be comfortable with. One is called the nuclear symbol, okay? Nuclear. What's in the nucleus? Protons and neutrons. So hence, it's the symbol, and it's telling you how many protons and neutrons are in there. So you have this written in the box. Look what this is saying. You always put the mass number on top. This is the largest number. Always goes on top. Think of it like a math problem. So the largest number is on top, the atomic number is on the bottom. Well, remember, mass number was your protons plus neutrons, and then your atomic number is just your protons. So look at how do I figure out how many neutrons. All you have to do is subtract. Subtract your mass number, so neutrons will be mass number minus your atomic number. And that's how you're going to always figure out how many neutrons you have. So for example, and so write down some examples. Helium, 4, 2, HE. It, I know its mass number is 4, the atomic number is 2. So what did I know from this? Well, helium has two protons. I know that because it's atomic number 2. It also has two neutrons. Again, how do I know that? Well, 4 minus 2 is my neutrons. Or if you add these two together, you can work it backwards. That's how you know the mass number. So then I have 7, 3, lithium. So how many protons are in here? Three. Yep, you're right. How many neutrons? Well, 7 minus 3. This has 4 neutrons, and it has 3 protons. Okay. How many electrons are in here? You know what? Let's jump down to the bottom. I'm going to come back up. Okay? Right, fill this in at the bottom of the page. Well, if it's neutral, the number of protons, which are positive, is going to have to equal the number of electrons if it's negative. Hence, that's why it would be pro um, neutral. So protons equals electrons. So let's go back up then. So look at there's no charge. How would I know if it's not neutral? Okay? This is not neutral. This is a charge. Or it could have a negative, or it could have a negative 2, or it could have a plus 3. These are not neutral. They're charged. That's not what we're worrying about right now. So look at no charge. It's neutral. So I also know then that this also has two electrons. This is neutral. So I also know then that it has three electrons. OK, this is the nuclear symbol. The second way you're going to see it is called the hyphen notation hyphen notation. So in the hyphen notation, you write the element name and then the mass number. So from this, the element, this is telling you number of protons. And then remember, the mass number will be the protons plus the neutrons. So whenever you see a number after, that's telling you its mass number. So hydrogen has one proton. How many neutrons then? Well, look at it. It already has a mass number of one, so this must have no neutrons in it. Hydrogen two, one proton. Therefore, this has one neutron. So what is this an example of? Yep, this is an example of isotopes not isotopes, isotopes. 
This is what an isotope is. Same element, different mass numbers, that's an isotope. Another isotope of chlorine. So if we're looking at this, use your periodic table. How many protons? Chlorine is element number, I don't have my periodic table. I believe it's number 17. Do you check me if I'm wrong? This is all from my memory. So if it is, tell you what, you guys finish this one because I don't want to be wrong. So this is what you're going to start with tomorrow. You fill it in. You go find your periodic table and you tell me. I want to know how many protons, how many neutrons, and how many electrons. Okay, no charges, so you're assuming it's neutral. Do I have in both of these isotopes of chlorine? We will see you tomorrow. Thank you.